all of this hundreds of dollars of camera equipment and I'm still thinking about switching to film. Is it just me or are more people getting into film photography and even shooting videos in film nowadays? The technology we have today is crazy. We have phones that fit in our pockets that are capable of capturing 40 plus megapixel photos and shoot 4K videos. Consumer grade mirrorless cameras are capable of shooting cinematic like photos and videos. And yet, despite all this technology, there is a large group of film enthusiasts who just love and stick to their film. Hell, I think this niche is growing even more nowadays despite all this technology that we're getting. Let me tell you this, Kodak, yes Kodak, a company that I thought went out of business a long time ago is developing a new type of film role. I think it's safe to say that film is here to stay. For the majority of my life, cameras for me were all digital. I grew up with pointed shoots, DSLRs, multiple camcorders, and now the Sony line mirrorless cameras that I'm using to shoot this video right now. Sure, there's an art to photography and videography, and it is a lot of hard work, but with all this technology now, it's gotten a lot easier. There's an instant feedback loop that we get with modern day photography. I mean, you could check the picture that you just took, checking the exposure levels, the focus, the saturation, the white balance, and that's just in camera. After the fact, I'm always tinkering with the photos or footage that I get in Lightroom or Premiere, either fixing the exposure levels in post, or even changing the whole feel of the image through color grading. All of this technology is amazing and mind-blowing. We've come so far as to what we can do on a consumer level to produce high-quality videos and photos. And at the same time, as much as we can do with all this technology, it can get a bit overwhelming. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. This is my dad's old film camera, the Canon Elan 7E. This camera actually surprisingly has a lot of modernish features on it. You can control the different exposure modes like auto, focusing on shutter speed or aperture, manual of course. It has sports mode, macro mode, portrait mode. You could choose where you want it to focus if you're using autofocus. But at the end of the day, this is still a simple film camera. You have 36 shots and you don't know 100% for sure whether the photo you just took was taken at the right exposure level, whether it was in focus or not, whether the white balance was correct. All of these things you don't know until you go out and develop the footage. And for a control freak like me, that honestly bothered me a lot at first. You would think with all these limitations, what's the point? You mess up a shot and that's one out of your 36 shots. And film rolls aren't cheap. Bruh. Why not just use a modern day phone or camera where you could shoot thousands of pictures or keep a video rolling and you could just choose the best out of the bunch? To that, I would say, I think you're missing the point. From my experience as a total noob to film photography, I think the draw is the limitation. I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive at first, but hear me out. As I was shooting my first roll, obviously I had to be a little bit more stingy with my shots because, well, you only got 36 and again, film rolls are not cheap. Bruh. Just from that limitation alone, I really focused in on my composition, taking information that I've gotten from YouTube videos or maybe classes I've taken before, knowing I only had a limited amount of shots. Along with that, I thought carefully about my exposure settings, making sure it matched the current lighting situation that I was in, making sure that I was in the right aperture setting to get that correct depth of field, but also taking into account the light that would come in from a lower aperture number. I had to think about shutter speed as well, thinking about the fast moving subjects that I wanted to take a picture of, but also recognizing that a higher shutter speed means less light. All of this knowledge that I've gotten over the years finally would be put into good use. I mean, I still use this knowledge when shooting digital, but with film, obviously you need to take into account of all of these things with each shot because you gotta get it perfect. Most importantly, what I think these limitations do for me is allow me to be more in the moment and more mindful when I'm shooting. Once I take a picture with a film camera, I'm done with it. I can't edit it on the fly, I can't delete the ones that I don't like, I can't pine over the composition, the exposure, and retake it. I'm dug in, and I'll never change. And while at first this goes against all my instincts of being a perfectionist, I grew to really love the experience. I could quickly capture the moment and then go on to experience what was around me. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. While I'm still very new to film photography, here's some advice that I could have used when I first got into it. 
If you don't already have a film camera, I would suggest asking around. Maybe some family members have them hidden away in an attic somewhere or in some storage unit or just lying around and they're not using it. I would also check out your local thrift stores because sometimes people give away these cameras not knowing really how much they're worth. And if all of those options aren't very fruitful for you, there's always the aftermarket places like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist. And I'm sure you can find some good deals out there. Also, make sure to do your research on what camera you're buying. If you want something very simple and don't really want to mess with any of the settings, I would go with a point and shoot camera. But if you want something a little bit more advanced where you can go into the manual settings and adjust all of the exposure settings and focus and whatnot, maybe go for an SLR camera like I have. Another tip that I would give new film photographers is look into the actual film roll that you are buying. Unlike digital cameras nowadays where you just slap in an SD card, it actually matters what film roll you use. There is no such thing as one perfect film roll. Some people prefer graininess, some people prefer things better to work in low light scenarios, some people prefer some color hues when it comes to their film photography. Just make sure you do your research because each film roll is unique. I personally went with the Kodak Gold 200 because that's just what my dad had laying around. I think the Kodak Gold performs best in daylight conditions, not so much in indoor and uh, poor lighting. So if those conditions is what you're shooting in, maybe go with Kodak Gold. My third piece of advice is brush up on your knowledge of the exposure triangle. It's important to know what aperture, shutter speed, and ISO does for your camera and how it affects your shots. As I mentioned before, you don't have the luxury of checking over your shots after you take them, so it's important to know that you had the right settings for the picture that you just took. You don't want to have your film developed and it coming back to you all blurry or out of focus or way too bright or way too dark. So a brush up of your knowledge of the exposure triangle will really help you figure out what you need to get the best out of your film roll. Of course, you're not going to get everything perfect the first time, and it is a learning experience, but you want to put yourself in the best scenario you can, of course, so you can get at least some usable shots. My final piece of advice is just have fun. Film photography is an amazing experience, especially after you get over that instant feedback loop ecosystem that you get from digital photography and videography. I think you'll find yourself a little bit more free to actually experience the things around you and be more in the moment while still being able to capture the shots you want. But that's enough of me romanticizing the film photography experience. Let's check out some of the images that I got for my first film photography role. My mom always said, Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. He describes by creating an imaginary picture. As I mentioned before, I used the Kodak Gold 200 to shoot my first roll, and I think it was expired, but the shot still came out pretty great in my opinion. The first shot, of course, was for my roommate's cat, Ramen. I really love this picture because it <laughs> captures Ramen in such a moody setting. I think my exposure could have been a little bit better. I was focusing on trying to get a shallow depth of field for ramen just to get the really crisp background, but I think it kind of got blurred with the poor exposure that I use. I like how the light is striking ramen on his on his mane, if you, if you, if you would call it that. It kind of gives him this like two-tone eyes, like one is red, one is green. I, I don't think that's how his eyes really were, but uh, that, that's how it got captured. So yeah, I mean, it looks very cool, very moody. A uh, perfect way to start out some film photography because that's how I'd, I would describe most images very, very moody and dreamy. Gives it more character. Another photo of ramen. This time the exposure was better. Maybe I went into auto mode for this one. The background is very decently blurred, a, li a little less grainy of a shot. I think my girlfriend, uh, Winnie, she uh, was like eating at the time and <laughs> Ramen always has to go up next to our food and take a look at what we're eating. He doesn't actually eat the food, which is weird. He just comes up and smells it. It really highlights the curiosity of Ramen, which is what I like the sh about the shot the most. This next few images was from my walk that I took next to the river by me. Graffiti is always a really cool subject to take a picture of, especially in street photography. All the colors pop out. I decided to frame the shot in between these two railings, which I think gives it a nice really, uh, yeah, frame for the popping out images of the graffiti. I don't know what this graffiti says or what it means. For all I know, this could be gang activity. I started to notice this film has a very warm tone. I think in general, film has a very warmish tone, which makes colors pop out even more. Overall, yeah, I'm surprised how clear and crisp this image looks. I really like how the framing came out where it's out of focus and the subject that I really wanted to focus on, the graffiti, was in focus. 
it's a pretty cool image overall. Maybe I wish I would get a little less foreground because it's not really interesting. I guess I should have focused way more on the graffiti. It's possible that I just couldn't zoom in far enough from where I was to really get the graffiti all in frame, but overall I think it's still a good image. This photo was also from my walk by the river and this is of my girlfriend's Air Force Ones. I think this looks really sick. We were next to like a BMX park I think so she was like standing on top of this ramp. The old decaying architecture really pops up and gives it a really gritty feel. Of course you got the Air Force Ones and I think a lot of fashion brands are moving back towards film just because I don't know because maybe it gives a retro vibe to the shoes and to the clothing and all, everything now is retro this retro that so yeah, it just gives a little bit more like creaminess to the shoe, a little bit more character, I would guess. You can see the mud really highlighted. The warm tone really makes the shoe look great. It's, it's a classic shoe using classic film photography, so no better combo than that. These next few images comes from a photo walk that I did with a photography group that sometimes I join here and there. We mostly focused on architecture, so here's a shot right here. We have a fire escape here which is in the shadows and why I took this picture was because we have this harsh light going on this facade of this building which was very bright contrasting it with the dark shadowy fire escape and then the shadows of this alley. I think this is really cool especially with film photography because contrast between light and dark is really highlighted. Architecture photography paired with film is also really cool because you get a lot more texture. It's not as crisp and clean as you would get in digital photography which gives it a little bit more of a lived feel in it which I like in film photography and also in architecture. Overall I would say like the image is like sort of warm. I don't know if the expiredness of the film roll that I use has anything to do with it, but I think it still has a very cool moody feel to it, which is like a trend you can see happening throughout all these images. This next image was really cool but totally unintentional. I wanted to take a picture of these two buildings, but it came out to be silhouettes with the sun in the background. But that's the beauty of uh, film photography. Sometimes you come up with something that you didn't even intend and it's better than what you thought it would be. I really like the silhouette between these buildings because it gives it an ominous feeling. There's the sun in the background, but these two buildings are just blocking that sun, kind of like the matrix. I really like how the sun also reflects off the sides of this building, giving that extra pop. Again, there's a lot of contrast between light and dark in this photo, which really gives it that nice, Moodiness. Moodiness, moodiness, moodiness. That's all I'm gonna say for these photos. Film is just moody. In addition to the architecture focus of the photo walk, I also wanted to capture some street photography. So I captured this couple here, or at least I think they were a couple, walking with their coffees on a Saturday morning. This was actually one of the first sunny days we had in a while in Chicago. So it was great. Everyone was out. Again, we got a lot of shadows from the trees and the buildings. We get their shat. We get the shadows of the people on the sidewalks. They just look like they're having a good time. They're well dressed. They even dressed to be like a little retro, I guess you could say. Like maybe his jacket or his like inner crew neck. Oh, he's got the Jordan threes, I think. The sunglasses of uh, them both look a little bit retro. You know, Ray Bans and all that. Again, has that warm tone. Maybe this warm tone comes from the Kodak 200 film roll, which I, I'm starting to like a lot, actually. It'll be cool to mess around with different film rolls and compare. This next image is my favorite out of the 36. There was a cello player playing in the park next to Water Tower Place. Everyone went up close, but I saw this perfect opportunity to frame him in between these two chairs and these person. I think there was another person sitting right next to her, which would have framed him even better. But I think at that point, she moved. You still get that cool uh, framing in between the two green chairs there. The building kind of towers over him and it's kind of dark and ominous. But then he's sitting there in the light playing his cello. It was beautiful. I actually used to play cello and I wish I could play as well as him. Maybe I'll pick it back up again, who knows. My last picture I'm gonna show you here is a failed picture of the Chicago Henge. Not only is my exposure a little bit, or not even a little bit, it's pretty bad in this photo. The Chicago Henge didn't actually pull through because of the cloudiness. It wasn't even cloudy above us, it was a cloudy right where the sun is, so everyone there was disappointed that we couldn't get a picture of Chicago Henge. I think I really have to learn how to expose lower light scenarios. Can't really see any of the foreground or the people there. You barely see any of the cars, you see some of the street lights there and obviously the distance where it's uh, lit. 
But I think the image still is kind of cool. It, it's dark again, contrasting with the light of the sunset. It's a learning experience. Next roll, I hope to get better. And maybe I should brush up a little bit on how to expose in low light scenarios. And that's my first experience with film photography. I can't wait to purchase more film rolls, even though they're very expensive, and just get out and shoot more film. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be selling my digital camera equipment, my lenses, my phone, because I'm not converting fully to film photography. After all, after selling all these equipment, it could probably only afford me a couple of Porta 400 rolls. The convenience of a phone camera and the ability to edit on the fly and post instantly is something that I don't think we're just going to ever fully come back from. And I don't think we should. A consumer grade mirrorless camera and its ability to produce professional quality photos and videos is amazing in equalizing the playing field when it comes to photography and videography. There's no way I'm going to give up this power all for a little sense of nostalgia. However, I think on special occasions, when I want to really savor the moment, capture it really quickly without having to worry about the baggage that comes from a modern day photo, I will gladly go back to film photography. What do you think about film photography? Is it something you're interested in? Do you prefer to just edit your photos and posts so that it looks like film? Or even use one of those cool apps where it actually emulates film or disposable camera like pictures? Or do you see yourself as an enthusiast going back to that nostalgia route of using a real film camera? Either way, photography is what you make of it and it's all up to your creative style. Just don't be afraid to set some limitations for yourself because it can actually set you free creatively. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope to catch you in the next one and go out there and shoot some film.